from iconic brands to long-standing favorites. There are many big restaurant chains that are still facing tough times due to the crisis. These companies may unfortunately end up closing their doors this year for good. It is no secret that the restaurant industry has been hit hard in recent years. Economic challenges, changing consumer preferences, and the impact of the global crisis have created a perfect storm for many restaurant chains. In this video, let's take a closer look at these struggles, exploring the reasons behind them, and discussing the potential closures that lie ahead for these big chains. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Here, we discuss the latest breaking news on the United States and what you need to know about the current state of our economy. There was a time when a trip to Sizzler was a regular weekend treat, while dinner at Red Lobster was for special occasions. If you have been wondering why you haven't seen an Applebee's in a while, it is likely because there is not one in your area anymore. These renowned restaurant chains, along with several others, are facing significant challenges as they strive to attract customers once again. West Coast-based steakhouse chain Sizzler has been around since the 1950s and has persisted through multiple bankruptcies, economic declines, and even an ill-fated shift to buffet dining in the 1990s that proved to be a disaster. The company has seen much better days. Its most recent bankruptcy filing led to a staggering 63% drop in sales in 2020. At the chain's peak, it boasted hundreds of locations worldwide. But as of 2023, that unit count has shrunk to just 73 domestic restaurants and 11 in Puerto Rico. However, executives say that Sizzler has big plans to revamp its branding moving forward. In November, Sizzler U.S. appointed Journey Further as its agency of record, tasking the company with modernizing and improving its media performance and propelling brand prominence as the chain looks to shake up the industry. In recent months, at least eight Red Lobster restaurants have closed for good. As a chain's owner, works to right the struggling seafood chain. The restaurants were primarily in the eastern half of the United States. Some had been open for decades. The 670-unit chain has been hurt by high food and labor costs. It lost $15.3 million in the third quarter. The closures represent just over 1% of the chain's approximately 670 domestic units. There are a continuation of a year-long trend. In 2021, Red Lobster's U.S. footprint shrunk by five stores. In 2020, it was down by four. Applebee's brands itself as a neighborhood grill and bar, but it seems to be making an appearance in fewer and fewer neighborhoods nowadays. The dining chain had grand plans for a turnaround in 2023 after closing hundreds of restaurants since 2017. But unfortunately, Applebee's now expects to end a year even worse off than it started. Applebee's parent company, Dine Brands, anticipates that the chain will have between 10 and 20 fewer restaurants in its roster when 2023 comes to a close. This would be an even larger decrease in store count for Applebee's than in 2022. In the 1990s, Boston Market was a fixture across the United States, selling old-fashioned, homestyle meals. But then Boston Market botched its own ambitious expansion plans. The chain raised a fortune with its stock IPO and then loaned that money to multi-store franchisees who could quickly open several stores in one area at once. Those outlets generated profits and a hefty cut in royalties for the parent company. But when those franchise stores experienced financial problems, many had to close. By 2015, Boston Market had fallen from more than 1,100 stores 
to about 460. That year, the company attempted a reboot, updating its long unchained menu with new items to compete with hipper, newer restaurants. But it didn't necessarily work out. Boston Market continues to slowly fade out this year. Currently, 285 Boston Market restaurants remained open, concentrated mainly in the Northeast and Florida. Ruby Tuesday is another big restaurant chain that is struggling to get back on its feet. Financial issues have affected the brand well before the crisis began, and it looks as though recovery efforts have not provided enough to keep the burgers grilled and the garden bar filled. Ruby Tuesday filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on October 7, 2020, stating it will permanently close 185 restaurants that had been shut down during the crisis. After filing for bankruptcy, just over 200 locations existed. From a grand 673 locations back in 2016, officials say that it is hard for Ruby Tuesday to compete when brands like TGR Fridays and Chili's have more units and coverage across the board. Once considered the fastest growing franchise in the world, business for Subway sandwich shops has declined over the past five years. There were 20,700 Subway locations across the country in 2022. Although that may seem like a lot, it is less than the 27,103 locations that the chain had in 2015, when it reached the status of the fastest growing restaurant chain. But the popular sandwich shop company may be getting new owners. The privately owned company has retained advisors to help explore a sale that could value it at more than $10 billion, bolstered by a revamp menu, store renovations, and international growth. Subway has been on the rebound in recent years. The privately held company recently said that sales at its North America stores open at least a year, rose 7.8% last year compared to 2021, which Subway said exceeded its projections by more than $700 million. Digital growth was also a highlight for the company, with sales made through its app or third-party services, doubling compared to 2021. Its international footprint also grew more, with more than 750 restaurants opening last year. This year will mark the 40th anniversary of Hooters. From a peak of about 430 units less than a decade back, the chain has been steadily shrinking of late. There were 311 Hooter restaurants in America in the fall of 2022, but by the beginning of 2023, that figure had fallen further to just 308 Hooter restaurants in America. However, the chain is starting to take advantage of new tech options with virtual locations and delivery app collaborations to help increase the sales. In the early 2000s, Quiznos was a premium choice sandwich chain, a top competitor of Subway and a franchise with nearly 5,000 locations worldwide in 2006. Fast forward 17 years, and the brand's footprint has decreased by 94%. In June 2022, there were only 170 Quiznos open. Experts say that the closing of more than 4,000 units happened because Quiznos had a bad business model, a tough competitor, a devastating recession, and a leveraged buyout. A similar reason has been behind other chains' closings, including Steak and Shake. The restaurant chain is pushing to implement modern changes, such as replacing human servers with virtual kiosks and introducing a new menu. But even with these new developments, it may not be enough to save the company. Locations have been disappearing for a while. 
In 2022, the number of Steak and Shake locations has been reduced to about 500. Since 1991, Joe's Crab Shack has been a favorite for many Americans. Customers are served heaping portions of seafood, no matter how far from the coast a location may be. But as of this year, the chain only has locations in 16 states. In some of those states, there is only one location. Back in 2017, the company abruptly shut down more than 40 restaurants, and it seems like that may happen again very soon. Noodles and Company Crystal, Sparrow, Krispy Kreme, and Friendly's are five other big companies that may slowly disappear if executives do not take action to save their brands. Comment below what restaurant you believe will be closing down next.